the countdown here. is on. What do you do in the last, you know, three or four days to, to get ready uh, with a good Miami of Ohio team coming in? You know, our first or our last big scrimmage was on Saturday with the team meet and greet and the versus cancer and had a lot of fans in the stand uh, stands and I thought it went really well. But we'll have another simulated scrimmage today. We'll have eight guys throw one inning apiece, guys that we'll use out of the bullpen and continue to be blessed by the weather. I know you guys have a hard time maybe believing that, but we had a window yesterday and we were able to get on the field for about an hour and a half. That's our hope again today. And, and then hopefully it'll be out of here and we'll have a, a nice rest of the week weather-wise as far as being on the field. How important was Saturday for your hitters to have one of those days? I know the, the quality of arms that they work against all the time until you see somebody in another uniform, it's, it's kind of hard to get some traction against them. That, that's the one thing that I left the stadium on Saturday feeling most encouraged about is our offense. The guys have done a great job with Coach Callier, Coach Seeley, and, and Coach Pennington, and uh, just a high-pressure offense, and the guys seem to all be doing that together, and, and that was the most gratifying thing leaving on the field on Saturday. I know the past couple of years you've had your ace squared away and you know who that is. How does your feelings towards Asa compare to any of those other years coming in, um, knowing that he's going to be your, your, your Friday horse? You know, being a Friday starter here at Texas A&M is certainly something that you have to go and earn. We've been incredibly talented on the mound over the years, and, you know, it's just nobody starts on Friday by default, and they have to earn it in everything that they do, and Asa certainly earned that, and I know he's going to give us the best chance to win on Friday. How, how much have you seen him improve, and what did he work on from your perspective over Team USA that makes him a different or better pitcher this season? Well, he, he just wants to be the best. He wants to be the best in the country at everything that he does, and he, he works hard at his craft. And, you know, his secondary pitches have improved over his three years here at Texas A&M. Coming in, he was really a two-pitch guy. Fastball changeup, didn't spin the ball well, and, and now he's got a slider and a curveball that he can use at will. But... He is just so physical, so strong, so powerful. Um, and, and for me, what he's got to continue to work towards is, you know, being efficient with his pitch count, trying to induce something to happen in three pitches or less to see how deep he can get us in the game. When you were recruiting him, did he look like that? Was he, or has he really put on the pounds in the He, he has really developed during his time here. He was certainly athletic coming out of high school, but it's probably 185, 90 pounds, and, and now he's 215. And, you know, he has just everything his, in the weight room, his diet, and all that he does. I mean, it's a 24-hour-a-day deal with him. Have, have you pretty much ironed out the rest of that starting rotation through the weekend for Saturday? Uh, Christian Rowe will go on Saturday for us. Chandler Jozawak will go on Sunday for us, and, and that will put Dustin Sines and Chris Weber in the bullpen. And, you know, when we go to those guys, we'll probably dictate what we do midweek next week. Coach, from the start of – the official start of practice three weeks ago when we talked to you to now. How, how much better do you think this team's gotten in the last two and a half weeks of practice? Well, we're certainly operating at a much faster level. Offensively, defensively, on the bases, just retaining things that we put in in the fall, getting back in the swing of it. For the last three weeks, we've been very blessed to be on the field consistently day in, day out. And so we're certainly operating much faster than we did three weeks ago. You feel like you guys are ready for Friday, that when the first game, first pitch comes, you guys are ready to start the season? By the time we get to Friday, we're certainly going to be ready for that. We need to take advantage of these next three days that we have of practice leading up to preparation for, for Miami of Ohio. But when we get to Friday night at 630, this team's going to be ready to play somebody in a different uniform, I can assure you. Do you still get uh, you know preseason jitters just you know before the first game, or is it all kind of the, the, the same for you? You bet. I get butterflies you know, opening day. I mean, it's... It's just a great feeling when, to go out there and, I mean, here at Olson Field, I mean, we're going to have as many people that we can fit in the stadium. It's going to be electric atmosphere. And, you know, nothing's changed for me for the time that I've been here. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm excited. and our players are excited and looking forward to that first pitch. Isn't it something how when we were kids, maybe if rain would sideline us for a couple of days, maybe if a field, but the way a field drains like this where you find a pocket and you're able to get out there, and what is it, you know, just kind of speaks to the technology and the grounds crew and all those things. Well, it's a well. game changer to have Nick McKenna and his staff and, and have the surface that we do. Like you said, 20 years ago, you get the rain that we've had, you might not be on the field for four or five days, but with the sand base field and the tarp and the grounds crew that we have, I mean, we, we find two hours and we can get out there and play. And that's the, you know, being at Texas A&M, being able to have natural surface is, is a blessing with, with the support that we have. You have to prepare or approach games any different. You know, with Friday probably going to be a little colder, and you know, could could be 
get some rain? I mean, how do you go into those types of games? Well, Friday's going to be beautiful. The sun's going to be out. It's going to be a little bit cool, but the sun's going to be out. The pregame's going to be great, and it might get a little chilly that night. But I think last Wednesday when it was 42 degrees and missed and rain, we found a way to get out there on the field. So our guys will be used to it, and they'll be ready for whatever weather we have throughout the course of the weekend. You've spoken highly of Miami of Ohio. Just a little bit of a scouting report on them, though. You know, Miami of Ohio, they had a great year last year. They won 37 games. Their coaching staff's done a great job in recruiting. They actually have a, two t uh, kids from Texas on their team. But they have their entire offense back. Eight of their nine uh, everyday players are back, and they have a lot of collegiate at-bats under their belt. From a pitching standpoint, they have a freshman All-American that we're going to face on Friday that's going to be low to mid-90s. And a lefty that apparently has made a, a jump this summer in the Cape that is a Six foot six, two hundred and twenty pound kid that I think she struck out fifty one and in thirty nine innings for Miami last year. So they're going to run out two very able arms. They they lost quite a bit of their pitching staff, but they do have some junior college transfers in there. Uh, but for us, I mean, we've got to slow their offense down. They stole over one hundred and ten bases last year, so they're going to want to press us, and we're going to have to do a great job controlling the running game, get the leadoff hitter, not let them start up their offense. How, do, how are y'all going to be able to press the issue against some teams? And I know that you saw that last year, you know, in the opening series, you you made a, a, a running team defend your run game. And it seemed like from that after that first week, it wasn't really a strength of this team. But I, I would think that y'all want to have that as a feature. I, I do feel like that's something that we're going to show this weekend and throughout the course of the year. You know, Coach Callier wants our guys to play incredibly fast. And we're going to force the issue on the bases. We're going to force the issue with small ball hitting and running and doing some different things like that. Not that we don't have some guys that can bang it in the middle of the order with, with Hunter Coleman and Will Frizzell. We've got some other guys that can turn some outfielders around. But uh, with the addition of guys like Ray Alejo and a couple others, we can really press you on the bases as well. When you go from having to have uh, you know, a lot of time, three hits to get a run in, how much better can your offense be? If because of that athleticism, it's just going to take a couple knocks to get somebody in. It's incredibly important. Like you said, last year we were dependent upon three singles to try to score a run in this league. That's awful hard to do. And you know, we've got to have some guys in the middle that can challenge the fences, but also some guys at the front and the back that can create offense. And we do have some guys that can do that. And it's, it's been fun to watch thus far. I know heading back into last season when you moved Shoemake to the uh, – lead off, there's uh, kind of trying to find who would fit into that three hole. I know at the scrimmage, Cam Blake uh, was there and he did a little bit of work there. What do you like about him in that in that spot? I like his experience and there's no moment that's too big for him. He likes the moment. He's incredibly competitive and he can do a lot of different things from an offensive standpoint. He can he can split a gap and he can short game as well and he can handle the bat. He's going to make contact when he's asked to make contact, but he can also like I said, slug a little bit when he wants to, but you know he, he fits there just because he's a senior, he's experienced, and he's incredibly competitive. It's a little bit of a unique uh, take on having a guy who's three hole who you trust having a, a short game as well in that spot. Well, it is, and that's what we're gonna. That's what we want to do. I've, I've said that you know for the last you know every six months, and that's what we're gonna do. But Cam's capable of doing that and handling the bat and doing what we ask him to do in that spot. From a defensive perspective, what's your comfort level right now in terms of the infield, in terms of who's playing at what position? Yeah, you know, it's still going to be a, a, some moving parts in there. If we roll the lineup today, uh, Logan Sartori would be at third, Bryce Blom would be over at second, Trevor Werner, true freshman at shortstop, and Hunter Coleman at first base. But Ty Coleman's going to be in the mix as well. Uh, Austin Bose has, has had a great spring for us from a practice standpoint. And Izzy Lopez is a true freshman that can really field the ball as well. So there's a lot of moving parts, and we're going to get to see a lot of different things. You know, the first three weeks we play 15 games, so there's going to be a lot of opportunity there. Is there going to be, a, like, rotating different players during different games? Like, are we going to see different lineups on Saturday and Sunday than we do on Friday? Oh, you may yet, depending on pitching matchups. Um, you know, if we make a move to use Trevor Warner out of the bullpen, certainly that's going to provide another opportunity for an infielder. If we've got a lead late, maybe make a defensive move. That's, those are some things that you may see uh, throughout early, early season for us. Thoughts on the season opener being on Valentine's Day? Well, I'm excited. I mean, it's been on the schedule for a year now, so – Hopefully everybody is taking care of uh, their Valentine and are going to go out on, on the 13th, Thursday night, and have a nice Valentine's dinner so they don't get in any trouble and we'll have the park full on Friday night. At least that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.